hi everyone uh i'm ben uh, head of digital at buckinghamshire uh, council um so i'm going to um talk through uh, i guess a few practical examples um of some of the ways that we've been sharing and collaborating uh, in buckinghamshire uh, the first thing i wanted to do though is i was just kind of reflecting a little bit on uh when we're asking how we can do more of something um what is it that makes that thing hard and, and might get in the way? And there's um, yeah, obviously tons of people have written about um, collaboration and collaborative approaches, but it's it's probably helpful um, to remember and to not beat ourselves up too much in local government that the, the system that we're working in was not designed for this. Um, in fact, quite the opposite. If you if you look at the kind of historical structures of of local government, um, how decisions are kind of made and framed, and how democratic accountability was designed to work, um, it wasn't one that was necessarily about um, kind of sharing approaches and and kind of reusing things across organisational boundaries. Um, we were traditionally much more inward focused. So, you know, the things we're talking about and we're trying to do, we are sometimes fighting a little bit against the system that was designed the other way um, and that's why it can feel hard sometimes uh, perhaps unsurprisingly um, so say so yeah collaboration in this environment pretty tricky um, and uh, I was going to kind of jump back to um, Boris's slides in a sec as well because um, the thing the other thing I've been reflecting on was was how often it needs a real kind of catalyst and, and Mayen's been talking about the um, you know the, the money um, and the the effect of something like a digital declaration from from a central government department that quite often can be the thing that unlocks people's willingness to uh, to try new things and to, to be more open and and to share more um, we in Buckinghamshire had probably one of those biggest uh, forcing functions around collaboration um, which uh, is is really interesting so you know over over the years um, the various councils in Buckinghamshire have tried to work together um, in in different ways and and to share services where it perhaps made sense um, and perhaps the most successful of those historically had been uh, Chilton and South Bucks uh, in the south of the county who had managed to align themselves on a few of their business functions and, and some of the kind of uh, you know more traditional I guess shared services around some of their IT and, and kind of HR type operations but it certainly was wasn't the norm um, and it wasn't something that had uh, kind of taken hold across the entire county um, until you know an enormous forcing function of a statutory instrument uh, comes along um, and the huge kind of political will and capital that was spent on on bringing about the decision to become a unitary council and so you know one of the types of collaboration we're, we're working with at the moment is is it, it is a pretty forced one actually it's it's a kind of you know a coming together uh, through some some pretty extreme measures of of these five organizations um and you know behind that was a huge amount of work both in terms of the kind of political narrative and the framing of why that's a good thing for the residents in buckinghamshire uh, but also you know the level of business casing and, and kind of financial kind of conversation that has to happen to to look at how this all lines up and to look at how you know in addition to to kind of delivering better services we can also realize some pretty big um kind of savings uh, as we as we keep moving forward um so so that that's an example of something we're, we're in the middle of right now you know, we, we kind of became a unitary authority uh, only in April uh, this year so it's all very new still and, and the kind of the work to collaborate uh, kind of keeps uh, keeps moving forwards um, as we're, we're kind of learning to, to be uh, kind of one organization um, so yeah back to the Boris's slides sorry Boris I pinched these straight out of your deck because I was just kind of mulling um, the different types of collaboration and what I was going to try and do now is just share a few examples across this spectrum that Boris put together um, and to talk a little bit about um, kind of you know, how we've done that here uh, here in the council um, and while I was doing that it, it was uh, it was immediately obvious um, that it was it was easier to do some of those than others so my incredibly untechnical graph here but in terms of you know where I would put the volume of collaboration uh, that I see both in in the council I'm, I'm working with at the moment and for councils I've worked with in the past is um, perhaps unsurprising um, it's it's a little bit it's a little bit easier at the networking end and we tend to do quite a lot of that and we're quite comfortable doing that uh, but when you get into the real kind of shared delivery uh, you know, shared budgets and people and, and kind of shared responsibility for the, for the delivery of projects um, certainly I've seen far less of that and, and that tends to be a lot harder to, to get off the ground um, so yeah Mayan mentioned one of my favorite ways of uh, networking at the moment the local gov digital slack uh, if you're not on it jump in uh, it's, it's a great community loads of people 
people, lots of ideas sharing, lots of people kind of calling out when they've got a particular kind of uh, problem or a, or a, a challenge uh, in front of them. Um, and similarly, you know, events like this, uh, another great example of uh, people kind of taking time out of their day um, to talk about and, and to learn about um, how we how we all do things differently. So as I say, this bit feels fairly comfortable, uh, feels doable, uh, feels like nobody's going to get in uh, in any uh, degree of trouble for, for uh, you know, participating in this kind of activity. Um, I think on the the, the sharing knowledge as well that's had a real uptick uh, over the last few years and you know I kind of would point to things like um, the kind of government digital service um, and the work of MHCLG around the digital declaration where I think people feel a lot more comfortable with some of the the ideas around working more openly I think people can see genuinely how how it does make things better um, and how you know we we are because we are spending public money we you know we can feel um, quite confident in, in being open and talking about the work we do. <clears throat> Again, I, I kind of say that from a you know a position of, of relative privilege, where you know I feel able to do that as a kind of white middle class male. I'm quite happy to kind of you know put my neck on the line and stick stuff out there and and share at will. Um, that's not always a straightforward for everybody. I, I I do appreciate that. So some examples of, of places where we're we're seeing this. So um, ourselves in Buckinghamshire. Uh, we're not the greatest uh, bloggers, uh, but we we have been keeping uh, a, a kind of uh, a narrative around our work to redesign um, the new website, and we're also talking about a couple of other projects in there as well. So we're we're getting into the habit of talking more openly about the work we do. Uh, we also live stream our show and tells, and, and kind of record those, share those on YouTube, so uh, you know, people outside the organisation are able to to kind of um, you know, listen to the work we're doing, hear hear what we're thinking about, and and um, give us some feedback. Feedback. And this proves incredibly helpful for colleagues in the organisation as well. You know, it's um, a lot of our internal comms channels aren't always picked up by people, and so having this kind of external facing thing means that uh, our colleagues in the organisation are able to, to kind of learn about the work and, and find ways to, uh, to kind of participate and, and learn from what we're doing. Um, and we're also obviously able to then share some of our thinking with with other local authorities. So um, you know, I know colleagues uh, just up the road in Northamptonshire um, are just about to go through a fairly similar um, piece of work where they're, they're creating some unitary councils to the north of us um, and and they've kind of benefited from our thinking and any of the mistakes we've made along the way and, and they're able to take not just the stories we've told but we've also shared with them you know our business case around this and um, we'll be in a position um, for those organizations that want to use the software we've developed we'll be opening that up as well um, so that, that that's all going to be there for others uh, others to pick up and run with um, uh, you know, I have to call out to the other organisations that, that kind of led the way and that to an extent we've we've copied along the way as well. So Hackney's digital and technology team are doing a fab job, you know, lots of uh, lots of blog posting, uh, lots of open code, lots of talking about their work and their thinking. Uh, similarly, uh, colleagues over in Essex um, and their service transformation blog uh, telling some great stories about the work they're doing uh, across the kind of digital and, and change agenda there. So there are some, um, you know, some, some people leading the way who, who you can point to and kind of follow um, and start to tell the stories in your own organizations as well. Uh, one of the projects I, I wanted to, to kind of reflect on a little bit where we've perhaps gone um, a little bit further in terms of sharing some of the resources around it is a project called You and Work. So this is, uh, I haven't put the URL, sorry, that was clumsy of me, uh, youandwork.buckcc.gov.uk. Um, and this was all about opening up some of the information that's usually uh, kind of gone to die on our intranet. Um, so we've got loads of useful stuff about HR policy um, and what it means to be an employee and, and some of the, uh, the kind of, um, you know, the benefits Fits you get and some of the, the you know the kind of rights you have and the expectations um, we have as an employer of our employees um, and we thought this stuff was really useful um, it should be more open uh, so we've we've kind of rewritten a lot of this quite heavy policy content in a user-centered way we've published it openly on the internet so it's not hidden on an intranet anymore um, and we've also shared so I've put the link to the github there so all of the outputs from the discovery work we did all the kind of personas we created all of the thinking we did along the way as well as the kind behind this particular site. Um, so this was you know, a great way to kind of do a really collaborative piece of work um, with colleagues in HR and then really share the outputs of that. And again, I know some organizations have started to look at this and have, you know, even if they've not taken the code, they can look at the thinking behind it. They can see how we how we felt comfortable opening up a lot of this information and, and how that can set a bit of a precedent for others to follow. 
Um, as I say, sharing the kind of budgets, people and access to platforms, but this is the less common bit and it's harder to find concrete examples of this all of the time. So I kind of talked about the big statutory instrument way of doing it, which is a fairly kind of blunt measure. Um, one of the other ones that has helped is uh, a global pandemic. So, you know, every time we have one of those, that'll open up some, uh, some opportunities to kind of share and collaborate uh, at speed in this case. So this is a, a directory of support services for people who were um, isolating at home because of coronavirus. Um, and this was developed in literally in a few weeks using a code base we'd already developed for an adult social care directory of services, um, which we were happy to share with colleagues uh, in uh, Camden and in Hackney. Um, and that was quickly kind of redesigned and repurposed into a very coronavirus kind of specific um, directory of services and, and a kind of user interface that you can see, uh, which we then took back and uh, republished ourselves because they've made some kind of helpful changes to it. Um, and a version of this is being used by a number of councils in the UK now. So that's that's a great example where the kind of the thinking behind this directory, the code itself, some of the design patterns were all very quickly kind of shared and reused and 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 designed and built in a really collaborative way where each organization kind of input to, to kind of keep iterating uh, this particular product um, so nice example you know again quite a big forcing function but it, it hopefully has helped show people that this is very possible and it's possible to do in quite short periods of time as well um, and then the last one I was going to mention before I, I kind of stop was um, the uh, the MHCLG uh, kind of digital program and yeah I can't underestimate really how how impactful this has been on helping us collaborate with organizations that we we would not have worked with otherwise so uh, we've been doing quite a niche I would say piece of work it's uh, if you're into data standards this is the one for you but uh, we've been looking at how we can more consistently publish data uh, to a an open standard uh, around some of these uh, community-based services um, and this we've been doing with colleagues in, in Ada and Worthing, in Leeds, in Croydon, um, down in Devon as well, and a number of other organisations who, uh, yeah, there's no obvious reason that we would collaborate together on something like this, uh, but for the fact that we had a shared interest and were able to use some of that funding from MHCLG, uh, which brought with it a forcing function. You, know, you could not have access to this money unless you were happy to collaborate and to work in a very open way where you share your outputs, you share the code. Um, so you know that that forcing function frankly has been helpful uh it's it's given us an opportunity to model some of these different ways of working kind of in inside the organization um and it means we're able now to make the case as we pick up new pieces of work as a team to say actually all of those kind of you know circular discussions we had before about intellectual property and you know why don't we turn this into a product ourselves and sell it to the market we can kind of skip past all of that and recognize that actually there is a much bigger benefit to be had by sharing this stuff and by collaborating on this stuff rather than you know uh, keeping it keeping it to ourselves and perhaps trying to pretend we're a software business when we're not um so yeah i'll, I'll stop there um just a really quick whistle stop tour of a few of the different ways that we've uh, we've kind of collaborated and shared in uh, in buckinghamshire